Hello, this is Haku Devine, and today, I guess my eyes are gone. Don't worry about it. Also, we're reading so many entitled parents' stories, I think I made a mistake here. We're gonna find out. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into this. And you can already tell from the amount of tabs I have open. First one is just the subreddit itself. That we're gonna be here for probably about maybe an hour. So let's lock in. Let's see if we can and do this. I'm so cooked. Or maybe not, this one is really short. My dad yelled us over using sunscreen. I, 30 female, want to preface this by saying I have mostly no contact with, with my bio dad for a million years. However, this summer was my grandma's 80th birthday, and my family got together to celebrate. It was my dad's mom, so he was there along with five out of six of us kids. Youngest is 19. I turned 30 soon after the trip. One of these days for the visit, we did a sibling beach day, which included our dad. My sister and I were putting on sunscreen. Our aunt literally just had cancer of her, of her scalp. We made sure we weren't near anyone and were only spraying ourselves and each other. My dad flipped out because sunscreen is on a long list of things he doesn't believe in and thinks is toxic. He started shouting on it as that we were spraying it on other people, not even him, just the wind may have carried it on the back of some were near us. I stood my ground and explained that we literally checked prior to starting to make sure no one was around to get sprayed. This resulted with him getting into a few inches from my face and yelling at me aggressively to keep talking back and see what happens, which resulted in me having a panic attack because of my PTSD, which he then belittled me for and said I needed to get over. Sounds like it might have been his fault. That's disturbing and unsettling from him. He then later on the trip criticized my choice in men despite him literally being the reason I am so comfortable being with people who are abusive. He also caused me to miss my flight because he was busy screaming at my grandma until she cried. Airport was over an hour away and no public transportation in this area. <sighs> Alright, your dad is like actively abusive. I don't like this. He gets upset I don't stay in contact with him and that I'm closer to my stepdad than him. I literally only see him at family events, maybe once or twice a year, and we have virtually no relationship with each other outside of that. I still love him because he's my dad, but he is trash at being a parent and did some serious psychological, and sometimes physical, damage on me and my siblings. I am way better off when he's not around, and the older I get, the harder it is to associate with him. Okay, this is familiar to me already. Awful Ohio dads, let's go. <sighs> I'm really hoping that you do eventually go completely no contact with him. Lag. Yay! We okay. We're here. Mother can't handle walking away. My mother and I have been through a lot. We've had multiple phases of our relationship being rocky, and this year it's only going. It's only been getting worse and worse. The beginning of the summer, I gave her the, the ultimatum of we're not able to work through this all on our own. We need a therapist. And Valerie that she's not allowed to say things that invalidate my experience. Like, I never did that, or that didn't happen. Thing is, before we continue, I'm going to explain why um, abusers tend to forget a lot of things that they did. So let's say that you have a 
memory of getting yelled at because you wouldn't eat your um, mac and cheese that felt like vomit in your mouth. All right. You were getting screamed at and called names by your parents. Well, that was a formative experience for you. For your parent, that was Tuesday. I think, the, I think there's a saying for it, something about an axe or a tree. I don't know. Anyway, oh, it's the axe forgets the tree remembers. Anyway, let's get it and move on. Yesterday, my mom does one of these things she does, where she says, I'm going to tell you something that you probably won't like to hear. This time it's for a later one. I feel like you don't care about contributing to the household because you won't give your school grant money that's left over after your tuition is paid. I shall fuck up because we've had this conversation five times. It's not worth me telling her the same things I always tell her for a fight to break out. So I leave it and I walk away. Then, less than an hour later, she's like, I have something else I want to say, at which point I tell her, no. I tell her, I don't want to talk. I don't want to repeat the same conversation we've had. She pushes me and I blow up a little. She says that she thinks she's had an epiphany as to why she's feeling the way she does. I say, okay, I'm sorry I blew up a bit there. Let me calm down for a minute. We go on to have a fairly productive conversation until I trigger her. The reason I'm putting those quotation marks in there is because... It's not because I don't think triggers are real or any of that stuff, but rather because this particular trigger is any description of her behavior as being negative. Words that are banned because this trigger are as follows. Yell, shout, scream, snap, snarl, gripe, complain, criticize, raise your voice, nasty, mean, loud, tense, angry. Okay, your mom seems to be... Really unable to ooh, 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 um, admit to herself that she does wrong, which is starting to sound pretty nice. Um, what's the word? Narcissistic. We were having a productive conversation about out appreciation and ability to show it. She was talking about how she wishes I would do work in front of her or talk to her about how she looks tired, etc. I was expecting to. I was expressing the fact that I have taught myself never to do these things because some of the time it's the wrong thing to do and she screams at me. I didn't say that because I was dancing around the trigger words, but you get my drift. I believe my exact, my exact sentence was, you can have a negative reaction, snap or yell at me, or just be upset. Her reaction to this trigger is always resorting to dismissing dismissing what I am telling her and telling me it didn't happen. This is really hard for me to hear from you because I haven't yelled at you for years. We had a fight at the beginning of the summer that led to me giving her that ultimatum about finding a therapist in which I finally managed to meet all of her requirements of me regulating my behavior, and walked away appropriately, even though she was screaming bloody murder at me from the kitchen as I was going down the stairs. So, I walked away, as I told her I would every time she invalidates my experience. We then talked for the rest of that day. Today, people are sleeping in. I see on my phone she had to go out at 2am to help my f the family friend, so I take care of the dogs. I'm finishing getting my breakfast it's in the kitchen when suddenly everyone else in the household is present. My mother says thank you for feeding the dogs and I want to be nice to her. I'm frustrated about the day before and I'm angry at her and resentful that she can go out of her, her way to help this random kid but doesn't care enough about our relationship to manage her own triggers. So I don't say anything. I ignore her and I take my food and I leave. I don't trust myself enough in that moment to say anything nice, so I don't say anything. Wow, that's like the most grown-up response. Not immediately, but within the next five minutes, she comes down to my room to ask me if I'm not speaking to her. 
I say, no, I'm not. She says, why not? And I say, I'm feeling angry right now. This is unacceptable to her. She's telling me that she's is telling me that uh, why could I be possibly be angry? It went so well. Everyone did great. She's standing in, in my doorway, trapping me in my room, trapping me in this conversation. Demanding an explanation for why I feel the way I'm feeling and why I chose not to engage with her. I did my best to stay as calm as I could and communicate clearly about what I was feeling in a way, but nothing I said was acceptable to her. It wasn't okay that I felt angry because of her actions. It wasn't okay that I felt frustrated that she's unable to even try to manage her triggers. It wasn't okay that I'm upset that I'm always the one that has removed my myself from the situation. And she's standing there, glaring at me, asking me to calm down. I have no way to walk away. She has trapped me in my room, in this conversation, and is repeatedly telling me that nothing happened. I have to scream bloody murder at her that she needs to leave in order to get her, her out of my doorway and get out of the e e conversation. She's allowed out, out to tell I me mean, anytime I'm too loud or I sound angry, or I'm shouting, or I'm screaming, or anything. She's allowed to tell me that I'm invalidating her feelings anytime that she wants to, or that I need to calm down or walk away. But she never walks away. She never manages her triggers, or treats me with this a baseline respect of assuming that I'm not lying or trying to make her look bad. I'm so sick of this. She thinks she's entitled to my emotional support of her at any point in time without regards to what I'm thinking or feeling. And she's entitled to say whatever the heck she wants about my behavior. But if I ever criticize her, I'm the bad guy. And nothing happened. She never apologizes for her behavior. She never makes amends. And she never changes her behavior. She thinks she's entitled to my constant improvement without putting any effort into our relationship. I wish to God I didn't have to live here. My life is the best it's been in a long time, and she seems dead set on making sure that the beginning of my semester is a nightmare. I am so close to being able to take on an actual career and actually break free of this. I'm about to get a goal I've been working for so long to reach. She doesn't see that she's burning these bridges between us by refusing to even try to improve our relationship. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right there. I said she he was sounding like a narcissist. The first, first comment we get is that you should try to sub r slash raised by narcissist. But she's having a lot on r slash entitled parent and um, posts. Dang, I really um, noticed it right away. Anyway. Oh, these are these short stories. These are two short stories made by the same user. Anyway. So it's called, Did my mom go to Ufar or this day? One time, I actually knocked, knocked something over with a bunch of glass as balls and liquid. I swept it up, and then I used back and clearance to get it all up before I went to school. Then later she tried to vacuum out the dryer and then found out it wasn't working. I told her what happened. She got really mad at me and started screaming and berating me, and I was crying. I'm like, please stop. I told her I didn't mean to do it. I was only trying to clean up the spilled mess I made. I think it I didn't think it was it was going to really hurt the vacuum that much. But she kept yelling at me and tried to make me fix a vacuum when I was in a broken state. <sighs> yeah, that's a bit. Yikesy. 
Uh, and this is another one with, with uh, the question in the same framing. And by the same person. Did my parents overreact to this say? One day after work, I decided I had enough money to buy an Xbox Series X. Later that day, my parents got kind of upset with me that I did it even though I bought with my own money and still had plenty of money. Also, they got upset with me because I used rocket money and after I left them to keep track of my budget, keep it from overspending, but she thought it was not a good site to have, so she forced me to cancel my account. Then I got super mad because my brother and his wife told him that I posted some disgusting videos on TikTok, which had a Carl dressed like Spider-Man dancing and stretching her legs and other ones with harsh language, but funny, for example, when God of Warzone King Kong jumped out in front of the screen and played Move, get out of the way music. I told her the videos were really not in front of her. She said, that's just an opinion. Well, I mean, then, and, and her, her idea that they're inappropriate is also just an opinion. And same with your brother. I got super mad at my brother and I caught him out of being an overreactive tattletale. Then he told my mom and they got mad at me some more and then and I went back home crying. Then I apologized to my brother. I know that my parents love me. I just think they're being overprotective and controlling. What do you guys think? Okay, well, let's move on to the next one. Oh, this one. This is gonna be fun. Whew. You're my kids. I will give you cancer if I want. Well, that's a great title. Amazing. I can't imagine a bad parent that would ever say something like that. I hope the sarcasm is obvious. Didn't think that I would be posting here, but I need help. My mom has apparently been on a 37-year period and has dreaded the fact that she had me, 15 male, and my brother, 9, so much that she has been yelling, assaulting, and trying to purposefully off me and my brother by smoking and vaping around us. She has only seen me as a slave to her work because I basically have to be a real parent since I have had to take care of my brother at home while having to go to a terrible school and try to balance both of my lives at once. Siri has recently told me it to get off her case about her vaping and she said, I can smoke, vape, or hit a bong on, on in my house all I want. These are my dang rules. But honestly, they're nasty. But uh, honestly, that's just nasty. What makes it worse is the fact I have discovered she has four different hunting rifles in our house. Should I call someone? I mean... I think so, yeah, but also, um, I can get that a, 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 a parents have their er, er addictions, you know? I think that maybe you should at least have a rule of, you know, going outside to, to smoke oak or vape. Just so you don't have all that smoke on your walls and everything, because it's just going to be making in your room just nasty and it's just gonna have that smell everywhere but yeah definitely but yeah maybe you should I think the comments are probably right honestly good response right here
All right. I don't have time to read, all, read the comments, though. We need to move on. We have four stories, and I think they're getting longer. I remember one being real. Here it is. Speak of the devil. Here's the long one. Oh, yeah, we knew to through those stories because I knew we had these long ones to go through. <sighs> and Tom mother gets butt hurt by my son's resting grouchy face and calls my son autistic. Hey, I'm autistic. Wait. OP is there a problem with that being a possibility? I'm gonna assume not. Let me tell you that tell my interaction with one of these entitled people I've only ever read about on here. It's not as dramatic as some of the tales on here, but I was almost excited to meet one out in the wild. Oh wow. I was beginning to believe if they were are born of myth and rat legend. I guess when you live in the countryside where sheep and cows are more plentiful than people, the chances of meeting one are slim. I'm already loving this. This is already getting like um, cinematic and everything. I mean, I know it's just text, but you know, it sounds cinematic. Now, my son, five, and I, female 39, are multilingual. I speak English natively and what I like to call toddler Polish. I left Poland at a young age and grew up up down under. My son speaks English at home and German at school since we live in, you know, Germany. He's native with both. During a stay in war Ursaw, my old stomping grounds, I, for some inexplicable reason, decided to buy 19 kilos, 41 free units for those in the States, of Duplo from my cousin. I do not know what that is. I'm not looking it up. I don't have the time. But she told me she was going to gather all the Duplo from her family's homes, some of which dated back to the early 90s, and sell it. I jumped at the opportunity to buy it. I didn't mention to her that I had been low-key eyeing that conveyor belt piece that my son so enjoyed playing with the last time she we visited her home. But here's the kicker. She wanted to sell it all in one go. Oh. All is what I bought. As well as an extra suitcase and luggage allowance to get all these dang locks home. What locks? What is that? Well, after hours of playing Suitcase Tetris, I managed to pack the Duplo in our luggage. Everything had Duplo in it, so I think it might be a character. I have no idea. Someone in the comments explained. No bag was left unscathed. So when we checked our larger suitcases and made it to our gate, what did we do? We found a spot on the e floor. Whipped out some Duplo. And my son proceeded to do what five-year-olds do, lay his Lego of space crew on the conveyor belt and send them plummeting to their doom, aka the bed from the Duplo Playhouse I whipped out for my handbag. Okay, I'm looking this up on my phone. Hang on. They're Legos! Okay. Actually, that makes a lot more sense. He was having a great time, allowing me to zen out for a glorious few minutes to drink my coffee in a relative peace after what was a stressful morning and journey to the airport. Also, a moment I noticed his snide little girl watching my son play, my spidey senses tingled. Ooh. For she had nothing to play with, and her mother was on her phone, paying her no attention. Though cute, I don't necessarily like children. You have a son, though. I'm an introvert, and children have big energies that are incompatible with my analog dinosaur brain. The love for my son naturally overrides the saying, as do my nivlings. 
I'm not looking that up, though barely, as their chaos is a whole other story. Things proceed to get awkward as this naughty girl, three, approach and watch my son play with the miniature or airport slash space prison and slash battleship he had constructed in the time it took me to blink. Last month he called himself a Lego artist. Believe it, this kid is going places. I've seen some Lego oh, 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 um, YouTubers, so yeah, probably. The snotty girls oh, stared at my son for an awkward five minutes as he continued to do his thing, moving his blocks closer to himself when he eventually noticed her watching him. Eventually, the girl went to her mother, and after a brief exchange of words, I was face to face with an entitled parent. I just didn't know it yet. The first step was to establish a language of communication. Divided to me in Polish. Do you speak Polish, German, or maybe Romanian? Polish. The mother kneels beside my son while holding her breath, her daughter, and starts looking to my son, starts speaking to my son in Polish. This annoyed me. You also for my kid, you ask me. He doesn't speak Polish. The mother, looking confused. Why not? Because we don't live here. He speaks English and German. The mother to the snotty girl. You can ask him to play in German. Too shy to ask, the snotty girl continues to chew her fingers as she shook her head. Can my I, I daughter play with your son? I turned to my son, knowing and honestly hoping that he would say no. But it's not ring from this girl's nose and saliva drenched fingers opened a window into my future, one I was willing to risk. Me to my son. Offspring, this child wants to play with you. Would you like to play with her? Without looking from up from his toys, my son shook his head. He said no. Sorry. The mother to my son. Can she play with you? We didn't bring any toys. My son ignores her and continues to play without acknowledging her. He doesn't like strangers, and I don't force him to have uncomfortable interactions with anyone, let alone passing strangers at an airport. Even as a baby, I knew there was no mistaken newborn spot by the hospital, for my son had inherited my resting grumpy face. The mother must have taken offense to the expression that is my son's face. I don't know what that word is. Me to my other, hoping she take it, she take the hint. He doesn't want to play. The mother observing my son, you should cheat. You should teach him to share. And there it was. I knew who I was dealing with. Flame on, claws out, Avengers assemble. And you should pack, pack toys. Is he autistic? I ignore the intrusive thoughts. No. Then why isn't he looking at me? You're a stranger invading his personal space and trying to take his stuff. No, I work with autistic kids. Okay then. I glared at her, waiting for her to leave. But she kept her eyes on my son. Does he smile or make eye contact? Yes. The mother, eyeing my son. Does he normally play with other children? With those he deems worthy of his invaluable time, yes. 
My mother is still trying to get my son's attention by waving her hand in front of his face. Are you sure? Yes. He doesn't want to play. Now back off. The mother, finally looking at me, my resting grumpy face was no longer resting and was generally, was genuinely grumpy, sprang her to grab her daughter and leave. The moment they were gone, my son looked at me and smiled. She was rude. If you say so. <laughs> oh, I forgot you can't see me shrugging. My son asked what autism was, but since he had started watching Extraordinary Attorney Wu with me, I didn't have to explain too much, as we had covered the topic before. But the word didn't click with him at the time. Of course, we saw this woman again. She was on our flight and looked mighty unhappy the entire time. When we were coming in for landing, the hostess even sat by a row and asked her to put her daughter in her seat and put on her seatbelt. But she has a fever! She'll cry! The look on the stewardess's face was worthy of a chef's kiss. Utter perfection. It was as if her very soul did an eye roll from within. And I felt my soul mirror her response. I felt her pain. After a few certain words from the stewardess, the mother put her daughter in her seat and put her seatbelt on. And wow! Not a peep out of the girl as we landed. We made it to the luggage carousel, and our bags were delayed by 30 minutes. So we found a quiet spot in the corner away from people, where my son could ride his suitcase around without getting in anyone's way. He happily pretended to be a race car while riding around columns. leaving me to my rider's brain going haywire. I envisioned the delay of luggage was due to my suitcases exploding on the tarmac, saying copious amounts of colorful duplo blocks, animals, trucks, and people of figurines scattering all over. This naturally caused chaos for the airport staff, who had to clear it all before resuming their actual work. I feared this might I would have my packing, but luckily the suitcases eventually arrived, closed and unscathed. I successfully smuggled three generations worth of Duplo blocks from Poland into Germany. Ah, yes. Because Duplo are such a controlled old thing. Meanwhile, the mother continued to keep staring at my son, as if to determine whether he was indeed autistic, as she suspected. Meanwhile, he was having a wonderful time riding around on those pristine airport floors, perfect for suitcase racing. The big smile on his face is while she waited for her luggage. And yes, I do, on occasion, call my child offspring. I also refer to him as child, son, kiddo, progeny, mini me. That brings back memories I don't want to think about. Small Fry, Broodling, Kitty Wink, Scion, Munchkin, and anything else I can scrape from my demented brain. The eloquence of which, depending entirely on how caffeinated I am at the time. He loves it. Long live and prosper, and peace out. <sighs> that is probably the most fun story I've run into on this subreddit. Mostly just because the um, way it was written was really interesting. Mom wants daily texts and to talk every day. Hey everyone, I wanted to share my experience with my mom who has been increasingly demanding about our communication. I'm the eldest daughter and moved out of my parents' house and to another country like six years ago. We have a generally good relationship, but her, expe 
her expectations are starting to wear me down. She insists on constant daily texts from me, no matter how many times I try to set boundaries. I've explained that I need some space or there's, there's nothing new to talk about or, or that I'm busy. It feels like that just makes her more anxious. If I don't respond right away, she starts sending me messages that make me feel guilty. Like telling me she's going to die one day and I'll regret not talking to her. She also shares quotes and videos about appreciating your parents, which adds to the pressure. My dad is basically emotionally unavailable, and I think that's why she leans on me so heavily. It's exhausting to be in this position. I'm not sure how to handle it without feeling like a bad daughter. Has anyone else dealt with something similar? How did you set boundaries without hurting your relationship? Thanks for listening. Well, I mean, you just set the boundary. You just say, I have to, I'm too busy for daily text. Can we do weekly or something like that? Like, you can't just say, hey, hey, I'm going to text you whenever I feel like it or something like that. Because while that, that is reasonable, parents want uh, to have somewhat consistent and and and, and, and talking with their kids it's it's to a certain point like like I know that my mom would be a little bit sad if I just didn't text her at least every week when if I were to move out and honestly just tell her for that uh, you would need a time to actually get around to it or something. Actually, I don't know. All right, anyway, let's move on. I think I get a very bad advice there. Maybe I'm not really good at saying boundaries. That's unfortunate. Let's continue. I don't like spending time with my dad. I'm a naturally distant person, and I require a lot of alone time to recharge. So I spend most of my day immersing myself in various solitary activities. Yeah, I do that. Two, I mostly spend my time on a game that I'm thinking of a bit too much. Library of Runa is really fun, though. My father never really he got that. He's constantly checking on me, asking me what I'm doing, inspecting my room. Wakes me up at 9, nine o'clock each morning, which isn't bad. I just suffer from insomnia, so I need to sleep in. Oh my god, waking you up early in the morning is just evil. Like, it's 2 a.m. I'm gonna be waking up at 10, no matter or what. Well, 10.30, maybe 11. Anyway. I should really probably finish these sentences before I start, start speaking my, my thoughts. And gets upset when I don't want to watch YouTube with him for four hours straight. I hope I'm not being dramatic, but I don't want to consume conservative versus liberal media for several hours when I could be doing something I enjoy. I'm not a very sociable person, which has been exasperated by my mental illness. My room is my safe space. I feel horrible for blowing him off when he just wants to see me. Am I being a jerk or is this reasonable? No, you're actually fine. Um, T 
teenagers tend to um start to distance themselves from their parents so they can um be their own person. All right. Last story. Wait, this is one that's long too. I wonder if it's gonna be yes when it's the last one. Oh well. Wanna claim my mom by burying her? Have fun getting a divorce. I don't know if my story belongs here, but here it goes. For context, my biological father traumatized me and my mom when I was three. Oh, mine I, 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 I did that to me until I was two. Then we ran away. Then he found me again when I was seven. My mom already had bad experiences in the past with men and I from then was terrified of them too, but she was still open for dating and wanted me to have a father figure since the original one was a clear no. <laughs> so she met a guy that I'll call Steve, and ever since I can remember I never had a good feeling about, about him. That feeling was quickly explained by lots of weird things that happened when I was still too young to remember. So I'm telling you here what my mom told me, and of course as years passed, I remembered more. So here it goes. She met this guy on a dating app, and the feeling between them passed correctly, though some stuff was odd. He was relying on his parents a lot for money-related things, and his ex was quite literally crazy. They had a dog, which he had to pay the food for, but never got to see. And it was perfectly fine with him, but my mom, being his partner, put an end to this very quickly. She never had any children, nor or never was. Oh, Steve never had any children, nor never was a close uncle to his nephew, so he never actually knew what taking care of a child implied. This is important for later. As the years passed, he was getting more and more aggressive with, with me, mostly, and I never knew why. He would constantly yell at me for no reason. I remember a few parts. A few particular instances, I need to stop trying to combine words, where he really got on my nerves. The first one was when I was around 10 years old. I was walking around on a weekend in my own, own house in a tank top and, and an underwear. Normal for a child, right? Well, apparently not. As I was walking down the stairs to go get breakfast, he started again screaming at me, and said something along the lines of why are you dressed around like a word that you should never use to describe a freaking 10 year old mind you we didn't even have anyone in the house it was just my mom him and i but she was sleeping so she didn't hear any of this he was Generally, very weird. I then came to the age where I learned about sexuality and all of its implications. So I started understanding things that were happening at the time and that happened in the past. Okay, Steve is probably on a list. He never was a that way weird, weird with me, but I therefore realized he was weird with my mom and I was constantly talking about weird stuff when she was around. An explanation for this was that my mom um, fell into depression and she didn't want to do stuff with him. So he, was, so he was constantly trying to get her in the mood, not caring if I was around or not. So one day... I just snapped. 
He was talking about his weird stuff with my mom while we were dining, and I was disgusted because no kid likes to hear about their parents' fun times. So I said, bro, you have a hand, internet, a personal room, and toilet paper. She obviously doesn't want you, so shut up and go do your thing on your own, or at least stop talking about that when we're eating. Yes, I developed a, a temper since I was tired of getting bullied by Ida's jerk. And he had the absolute audacity to say that I shouldn't be saying these things. Like, bro, you're the one who, who started talking about uh, how we're sitting at the table. But anyway, after that, like three years, my mom I'm so accepted his proposal and got married. A few months before, I caught something weird again, and it didn't seem weird at first when my mom explained I was disgusted. Steve was really into cars, but in a weird way. He listened to engines sigh and be happy about it, listened to them on loop and full volume in the house and would show car stuff to everyone who even though not a single soul in that house gave a cry about it. So when I saw my mom and him on the couch, with her trying to get away from him showing her a video, oh, arm raised, I thought nothing of it other than she clearly doesn't want to see whatever car crap he's showing her. <laughs> I'm gonna get a cramp in his arm if he stays like that for too long. So I told him, um, I think she's not really interested in the video you're showing her. And he again screwed at me for invading their couple life, and I didn't understand how a car or video was invading your lives, but okay. Later on, my mom informed me that the video was, in fact, not about cars, but a very explicit video about stuff that he was playing without headphones while I was right behind them. Doing my homework. I love of that OP was like, why the heck are you uh, 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 trying to force someone to uh, uh, deal with your uh, car obsession again? A couple of weird instances like that happened, but fast forward to do a wedding. I still honestly don't know if I cried of joy or of sadness is that day, but I did cry. But my mom was happy for once, so I tried to smile. I still don't know why she accepted to marry him, because he was being a jerk all the time. My mom was a has a, a very rare chronic illness that literally fuses her articulations with her bones, which is extremely painful, to which the only treatment that exists only slows down the process. And he already told her he would not take care of her if she was to get paralyzed because of her illness. And she needed crutches at the time to be able to move. What the heck? This is just an objectively bad partner from beginning to end. Oh my goodness. Four months after this, she realized he was cheating on her through the same app they met and was sharing all their bedroom moments and her traumatizing backstory. She confronted at him and he said he felt bad and needed someone to talk about everything. So she told him that she knew a few psychiatrists that, but none of them were reliable. If she found on them on dating apps and that she felt and that she felt horrible that he shared all her life with random strangers, but that somehow didn't engage the divorce process. During all the time we were all three as somewhat a family, he kept on implying that I was receiving better treatment than him for my mother because she was telling me that she loved me, but not for him. Gee, I sure wonder why. Steve is quite the creep so far. 
and that I was receiving way more hugs than he did, and kept on telling me that the wheel was turning when I was screaming back at him for more bullshit, for more or stuff that he was mad about. One day my mom had it. She couldn't take care of her own, own long hair anymore because of how much pain she had in her hands, and she decided to go get them cut. Without Steve knowing because he was fully against it, and she came home with much shorter hair. Okay, fair enough. And when he came home, he snapped and made a big deal about it. Told her it made her look like an old sack and that he hated it. When she explained why she cut her hair, he answered with, I don't care. I loved it long, so you should have kept it long. And three days later, she was telling me she was getting a divorce and an apartment for her and I. I was hyped, but didn't say anything because she wanted to tell him herself. Honestly, yeah. Do you think they have a right over, or, or someone else that over how someone else or what a what? Men who think they have right over another person's body. But me being me, I vomited the whole thing when we had an argument, which yet again went to I'm the one paying this and that, and if you're not happy about it, and you're free to leave and get your own apartment. To which I answered in the heat of the moment, oh, do not worry about that, it's on its way. And when his jaw dropped, I realized what I just said and went upstairs from where I heard him cry. When he did move out, he tried to make me feel bad for his own actions. In a moment where we were both alone, he told me, Happy now. You got, you finally got us a divorce. You, your mom, all for yourself now. Like you always wished. And I realized... He was jealous of the love that my mom gave me, which is seriously weird. What the heck? And I answered with, Remind me who she's separating herself from again. Thank you. And I left. He tried to get to her, her later with the uh, famous, I think I'll commit its self termination if you don't come back. And my mom never cared because, first off, he was a coward. I would never do it. And second, and of, of he's a grown ass adult who can make his own choices. So why should, so why would she care? Everything was fine for the first week in our new place until I realized he was stalking us, and mostly my mom's car that she had to park near the road, so he knew if she wasn't home even after the divorce. I would ask her why she wasn't home, etc. He kept being creepy until one day I posted a photo of my mom with long hair holding another man's hand who we couldn't see the face of, who's now my current and way better stepdad than Steve ever was. Since then, he's blocked us all and stopped socking us. In short, stepdad was jealous about my mom's relationship with me. Mentally abused us for it until she he asked for a divorce, and he still acted it like a jerk because he thought marriage was a trap for her to stay in, but stop being annoying once I'm up. I rebuilt her life. If there's comments about some a few other de details on shadowy parts, I might answer depending on the questions, of course. But feel free to ask them. And I tried to separate the text better so that it was easier to read. I truly appreciate that. <sighs> All right, and I think that's it. Oh gosh, this was a this was an hour long.
Well, that was I slash entitled parents. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!